So today we'll go through on all the things you need to know in order for you to use Lightroom to edit your pictures. So first you are going to start by creating a new catalog. You click on file and you click on new catalog. And then you name it whatever name you want to name it. And you click on create. And then catalog that you are working on. Lightroom is going to ask you if you want to back it up and if you don't want to back it up. So you can just click on skip. Lightroom is going to relaunch because of you are creating a new catalog in order for you to import your pictures. So, and then this is a fresh Lightroom for you to use. The next thing for you to do is to import your pictures to begin. And make sure that you are on library before you import your pictures because if you are on develop, you won't be able to import your pictures here. The import icon is no more here. So you make sure that you are on library and you click on imports and you select your source through your computer. When you get to the folder and you click on the folder, the pictures are going to show. So as you can see, they are all checked. All photos are checked. I want to edit them using Lightroom and I'll click on import. That is one way to do that. Here's another way of importing your pictures. You go to the file, make sure that you're on library, yes. Go to the file on your computer and highlight all the parts that you want to import into Lightroom and drag, right click and drag into, left click and drag into Lightroom and drop it. And then Lightroom is going to open it so everything is all checked and you click on import and you're going to import and then you're going to wait for it to load. After you have imported your pictures, you can edit your pictures in this library phrase. You can edit it in develop. So let me show you what you can do here. In library, these are the tools you can make use of. This is a save preset. You can use any preset here as you want. For example, black and white. And I use this. So there's an effect on this picture. One thing about library is that it shows you the overview of all your pictures. But when you develop, it takes you to individual pictures. Like you can manually do so many things in develop. So here you can adjust the white balance, change it to any one that you want. Let's see the lights. So if you check very well, you see there's a difference in this box. So if I highlight all the pictures, all, I highlight all the pictures. If I change the tone control to auto, it will affect all the pictures. As you can see, as you can see it's loading, it's affecting all the pictures. So that's for library. So I will reset the reset icon and everything is going to be reset. So you can play with all these icons there and see what setting you want to use for your image. So let's quickly move to develop. When you are in develop, Lightroom brings out each picture for you to see and work on them. If you want to zoom, you can just left click and you zoom. Then you can also use here to this part, this navigator part to zoom in and select the parts that you want to view well if it's the face if it's the eyes and or then if you want to come out you can just come here and left click and you're going to be out this place is for precepts if you have any precepts that you have to install you can just find them and apply them you can see as you are just scrolling through lightroom is showing you what they are this blue light that you are seeing is showing us that those parts are too dark. And if you find red, it shows you that they are overexposed. These are the natural preset that came with my Lightroom Classic, Adobe Lightroom Classic. Once you click on any of these presets, you have the option to adjust it here because we are manually in control here. You can also edit in auto, but you are manually in control here. So you can install presets and work on them too. So what we'll do now is that we want to work on the pictures by itself without any preset. So we're going to come here. 
this is the temperature adjustment icon so you can increase the temperature you can reduce it if you want the cooling effects you can reduce it you can increase it anyone that suits you so that's that about that anytime you make any editing and you don't really like it you can just control z and it's going to restore it back undo undo that's for reversing whatever you have done then if you want to reset the entire settings back to the original way it was you can just click on reset and it's going to reset on this one so for example if i do this and i don't like what i've done i can just click on reset and everything's going to reset that's very good so the exposure the contrast you can just work on them and see what works for you highlights if you don't if there's too much light on the image or on the cloth of the image then for the shadows you can reduce the shadows by dragging it like this and you can increase the shadow by taking it back to this place yeah. then for the whites affecting the whites the blacks the blacks and then yeah, an interesting part is the presence this is for the texture of the image let me zoom in for the texture of the image see can you see the way it is here and how it is here so you play with the levels that you want and the clarity i can see how it is here and this is and vibrance for the colors saturation to just to pop a little bit so let me zoom out so so you play along with the settings that you want so you can adjust the curve here you can adjust the curve this, it just works with the light this is this is more about the lighting of the image so also here you have because of you are dealing with the lights you can increase the light of the image with this you can increase the darks of the image with this you can because see you can see the blue is showing me that there are too much darks and uh, you see you can see the red that means the highlight is too is overexposed then this one means it's underexposed so so that's it and shadows again concerns shadows relating to the light yeah then for the colors if you want to play with the colors you can always change the colors whatever you like we have the eel we have the luminance, we have the saturation, the hue. It, it suits to a kind of shade of green, another shade of green. So it changes the shade of the colors that you want. Then the saturation looks, it intensifies the color like this or like this, like this or like this, whether it fades it or it pops it up. That's for saturation. Why the luminance adjusts the brightness of the color, whether there's much light on it or there's no more light on it. If there's any color in the image, you can always color it using the color icon. As you so please. Okay, so let me reset this and move to the next one. So for the split toning, you can select colors and you see the effect is having on the picture. And then you can increase the intensity, the rates, increase the percent, and reduce the percent. And that is for that. So let me reset this. You will see the highlights and you see the shadows. And let me reset this. Then moving to the details of the pictures, you want to make the image sharper. Use this, the radius that you're using for the sharpness and the detail of the picture and all. Then for the noise, if there's too much noise on the picture, like the picture is not sharp, there's not enough light and you have overexposed the picture and there's noise on the picture. Like, let me see if it work on this like this. So you can see some noise here. You can see all this little, little noise here. So if you want to reduce the noise, you just need to use this to reduce the noise. Can you see the way it is? It transforms it. The noise it reduces it. So that's what this does. If there's too much noise on the picture, it reduces it by making the picture smoother and working on the colors. So for this transform icon, 
if you want to change the perspective of the image, that's when you use this. Most times you might not really need this. You need to change the aspects and all. So most times you might not need this. So, but then this is what this is all about. And you can play with each of the icons. So that's for transform. And if for effects, you want to create different kind of effects, like let's say the one that is here now is vignetting, post crop vignetting. So look at, let me zoom out so that you can see. So can you see, can you see that effect for the black vignette and for the white this side. So you can also work with the change in midpoint and all. The red is showing me that it's overexposed. So you can feather it, you can touch the roundness and all. And if you want to hide any, all the settings in this effect or any of the icons, you can just click on turn off effect. You see the toggle there and it turn it off and, and it goes. So, but let's just reset since this is just for tutorial purposes and calibration. You might not really need to use this place, but this is what it does. It's, you are trying to calibrate the colors, like balance the colors and all. So, you if it's the red, if it's the red in the image, you can adjust the red and all. That is that for calibration. So let me so let me reset all settings and go back to the beginning. Then you can also click on auto. Lightroom is going to automatically edit the pictures for you. So, so now how do you copy and paste? I want to copy this setting and paste it on every other picture here. But so I want to copy this setting and paste it on another picture. So I move to this icon here, copy. So this is ticked, this is checked, this is checked. Treatment is checked, white balance is checked, basic tone is checked, tone curves is checked, texture, clarity, and all is checked, except for cropping. Because if I crop the image, it might not be the same proportion for the other image that I want to paste it on, so this is not checked. Spot removal is not checked. If I'm removing spots for the image, transforming the image is not checked. So we have the effects. If this vignetting is checked, noise reduction is checked, split stony colors, they are all checked. This is good. And you click on click and then you click on copy. Then you move to the image that you want to paste it on. So this is the image I want to post it on. So I click on paste and I have the settings there. So I can just keep clicking on paste, clicking on paste till I get to the end. But no, Lightroom is so dynamic that you can highlight all the pictures from, you st okay, you start from where you want to copy from. You have copied now, yes. Then you highlight or are you click on this icon synchronize you can see synchronize so when you click on it lightroom is going to paste all the settings on all the images you have clicked on you have highlighted so you can see the images are loading the settings is loading on all the images you can always still work on them again, but they have the same setting. Maybe this one is overexposed, you can reduce it, you can increase it if you want. That's one special thing about Lightroom. Finally, you can decide to use, edit a particular part of the image. For example, I want to edit only the head or only this part of the hand. Like I want to increase the light there, I want to increase the shadow or I want to increase the colors. So you click on adjustment brush when you click on adjustment brush this space is going to change there's a mask you can use the brackets key to decrease and to increase so if i click on this part because of i already have my shadows increased here you can see i can increase the shadow of only the head parts i can decrease the exposure of the head and i increase it I can come here to the hand, reduce the brush size and paint and click over this side to brighten the hand parts. 
You can also create multiple layers for this. I can cl click on new. This is another layer. So I click on this. I click on this. So it's going to affect only the end now. So if I do this, can you see? It's only really affecting the end parts. Can you see? It's only really affecting the end. So it's only really affecting the end parts. So that's a very special tool. Then you can also remove some spots using the clone, the brush. So let me zoom in. Click on here. And then for this, so you just click on this. And then you select the parts that you want to pick from. And then you click on it and then it works that way. So I want to remove this. So you select the parts that you want to use. And then you can remove blemishes on the skin. So basically, and if you want to crop the image, you click on this icon and then you can change the aspects here, the ratio by clicking here and choosing what you want and adjusting it to, to what you want exactly and click on done. Then let's zoom out. Why you are editing your pictures and you want to check what the original picture looked like and what you are editing currently, you click on this icon here cycles between before and after views this icon that looks like a y y so once you click on it it shows you the before and the after of the image if you click on it again it's going to show you in a different way a before and the after if you click on it again it shows you another one before and the after click on it again it shows you another one before and the after the same but different views so if you want to make it only just one view you come back to here and click on this when you are done editing your pictures, then you export all your pictures into your computer. You highlight all the pictures, Ctrl A, and then you right click and click on exports. And where do you want to export the pictures to? So here yeah, I have the same folder as original photo. You can choose a folder letter, you can choose a specific folder, but here is the same folder as original photo so it's going to create a new folder and this is what i named it you can change the name of yours to whatever you want to name it as if you want to rename the images to click on this and to tell you what custom name do you want to use and unclick this then the quality of the image that you're exporting whether you want 100 percent whether you want 20 percent whether you want 80 percent and if you want a limit size, maybe you don't want the image to be more than 800 KB or more than 1 MB, you can just adjust that. So I'm just going to undo this and leave it at this. And then the image format, if it's PSD, PNG, original or JPEG, and the color space too. Then if you come down here, sharpen for screen, amount I, then watermark, I have my watermark that I use, as so I have toggled it, you can also create your watermark here. Yeah. You will just look for edit, edit watermark. You see the option, so you can also edit your watermark. And then you click on export. And so guys, this is all you need to know in order for you to edit your pictures using Lightroom. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to my channel.